businesses start to reopen or plan for reopening, there are a lot of conversations now about what that's going to look like and what new safety measures will be in place to protect workers. Joining me now with more on this is employment lawyer Stuart Redner. Stuart, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, good morning, Lindsay. Thanks for having me. Let's start with that first step, recalling your employees. What are companies doing now to prepare? Yeah, it's been kind of nice. We work with employers and employees. So we've seen all these discussions from both sides. And uh, the nice thing is the questions we're getting now are not so much about layoffs or about recalls. And there is so much misunderstanding out there. First of all, if you're unionized, you have a collective agreement, and that will govern the order of recalls. But if you're not unionized, which is the most, which is the majority of employers, and you don't have a policy in place, which would be unlikely, you can pick and choose who you recall, when you recall them, and for any reason or no reason at all. There are no rules. It doesn't have to be based upon seniority, which is the common myth. So you can bring people back sort of part-time at first and ease people back in, in terms of numbers in the office space? Uh, you hit on the one exception to this. So you can bring back whoever you want, whenever you want. The challenge is you can't necessarily change the terms of employment. And that's true whether it's a recall from a layoff or just an ongoing relationship. Uh, if you're going to want them to come back part-time, we've been helping a lot of our clients go through that because the business reality might be you can't afford to have people come back full-time. We've been having our clients go through the conversation with the employee and explain the business needs. And people are pretty understanding in these very unprecedented times but you're going to want to have the conversation and ideally get the employee to sign off on an agreement that they will accept part-time hours for at least a temporary period of time. What sort of safety measures have to be in place when people get back? Well, I think it's you start from the fundamental proposition that an employer has the obligation to provide a safe work environment or at least to take reasonable steps to do so. So obviously, remote work is the ideal. If that's not possible, physical distancing is critical. And obviously, in some workplaces, that's not going to be possible. Take whatever steps are reasonable. Having your employees wear masks, making sure that there are barriers in place, limiting contact as much as possible. But also, activate your health and safety committee if you have one. Uh, let them do a risk assessment. Go let them walk around the workplace, figure out where the concerns are, design policies and practices. And then the key thing here is communication. Make sure everyone knows what the expectations are, what the rules are, and also how to report a concern if they think the workplace is unsafe. Well, and Stuart, I want to ask you about that. Uh, lastly, I want to ask you about somebody who says, okay, your employer is calling you back in. You're like, eh, I don't feel that comfortable going back to work. So what are your rights there? Yeah, we're, we're seeing that fairly often. And look, we start from the fundamental proposition that if it's a if it's a regular hour of work or day of work, even after a period of layoff, you're expected to go to work. And the only exceptions to those would be if, for example, you have a statutorily protected leave. And we know in Ontario and most provinces there are leaves now for COVID-19 related absences. If there's a legitimate reason you can't go to work, then you'll be protected. If there's a duty to accommodate, perhaps you are immunocompromised, then you may not have to go back to work if you can't be accommodated. Or if, as I said a minute ago, if the workplace is unsafe, and that's the workplace is unsafe, not that you're scared to go out in public generally, then there might be an exception. But if there is not an exception, you're expected to go to work. And, and if you choose not to, you're, you're effectively abandoning your job. You know what I will say, Stuart, uh, we appreciate your time and your insight today. I, I do also appreciate the fact that we're talking about people going back to work. So that at least is some hopeful news for a lot of people, I think. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.